we literally have a gazillion ways to communicate, but we still are facing the same problem. We don't communicate. Nicole B, the Chief Pretty Chicken Charge at ShopPrettyPieces.com. Hi, it's Emily Missner of Travel Cat and Your Cat Backpack. Hey, this is Tanya Leatherstein with Big Eye. And you are listening to... And you're listening to... And you're listening to e Show. Welcome to the e Show, presented by Blue Tusker. The number one place to hear the inside scoop from other e-commerce experts, where they share their secrets on how they scaled their business and are now living the dream. Now, here is your host, Andrew Mass. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Ecom Show. I'm your host, Andrew Math, and today things are going to get a little sexy. I'm super excited with this one. I'm here with Tino Dietrich of Ella Paradis. Tino, how are you doing, buddy? You ready for a good show? I am ready. Thank you for having me. Hello. I am so excited to have you on the show. And I know it's biased because I say that about everyone who comes on the show. <laughs> but you, you know, you and I have, have spoke before. We've done a little work together. I know a lot about your business. And I'm super excited to learn how things got started, how you got through, you know, those initial uh, struggles in the beginning that every owner goes through and all that fun stuff. But why don't I I give you a second here and let you kind of introduce yourself and, and tell everyone a little bit about your background and El Perdi. Sure, sure. Uh, very happy to do that. So I'm uh, uh, in digital since uh, early 2000 and uh, started in the online dating space, uh, which at that time uh, was adult. So when we went to affiliate shows and whatnot, we were standing there was, you know, uh, everything adult slash very porn. Um, but next mm-hmm. to me was the guy from Match.com and, and whatnot. And today, obviously, that you know makes you laugh because uh, uh, Match.com clearly is not adult anymore. And yeah. <laughs> uh, But, you know, things have changed over the last 20-something years. And uh, so I got stuck with digital. I really liked it, even though it was kind of a late bloomer. Um, and... Something that kind of stuck with me was uh, the, the, the void in uh, the area that we're working on right now, which is catered to people, uh, mainly in our uh, case, it's, it's women and couple uh, in the sexual health and sexual wellness space. And um, uh, of course, the last uh, uh, two, three years have obviously given the whole thing a bit of a different uh, acceleration. But even before, it was very, still very adult and very female mm-hmm. degrading and whatnot. And that has changed. So I saw that early on. Uh, and uh, then 2015, I, I started the company with my two co-founders. Yeah. So you were obviously in, you know, you were very on the digital side, obviously on the social and the dating side. So you, you've developed a bit of a, like almost like a relationship expert status as well correct <laughs> I, look, I i've been always data driven um mm. and it, i've i've always tried to leave my opinion out of discussions when it comes to that so when people ask me about relationships and whatnot you know i i look at data and uh i may be surprised myself uh but i know data is online so mm-hmm. whatever you and I think may be one thing. And then uh, we look at data and we say, hey, wow, interesting. And yeah. I've always followed that path. So that's where I come from. But yeah, of course, uh, you learn with data too. How did you get into this industry specifically? Like you, you saw an opportunity, but what was like the first steps that you took to kind of get El Parity up and running? So I, uh, it was a personal situation. Um, where my wife uh, uh, went after we moved here for good in in uh, 2013, and um, she wanted to buy some laundry. And she said, "Oh, I'm I'm going over to Europe. Uh, I can buy it over there." And I said, "Oh, you can buy it here too." And she's like, "No, it's a lot of Victoria's Secret." And I'm like, "Oh, come on, let me show you." Like classic guy, you know. <laughs> I, I know <laughs> clearly you're wrong. Let me fix it. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, it, I, I have to say that I was very wrong. Uh, Victoria's Secret owned it. It was amazing um, to see that one company and go completely blindsided there and um, really took that space. And 
I said, wow, uh, uh, how is that possible? And, and at that time, you know, it was one of the most profitable retail companies in the world per square foot. I mean, believe it or not. I mean, it was a money printing machine. Amazing marketing. And I said, hey, so where do women actually go? Because I look, I'm from Germany. I know we're all, uh, everybody thinks we're a bit more open-minded, you know, and the nude beaches and whatnot. And <laughs> But still, I said, where do people go here? You know, what do, what do they do? Where do they shop? And I figured out that there was nothing. And I said, there's more to this. So it was my experience in relationships and um, what people are looking for. I said, there is a huge opportunity here to help people to find uh, ways to connect, to improve their, you know, sexual health life in and in and in. And that's how we started. I mean, there was literally nothing. It was 2015. Mm -hmm. So I know, you know, in this this category specifically, it's a little because it's still, I guess you could say theoretically, like taboo to a certain extent. You're dealt with a lot of restrictions. Like you, there's certain areas that you can advertise. Sometimes you can say certain things. You can't say other things. There's platforms that will allow you to advertise. There's ones that won't. So how is it over these years? Because even today, I can imagine it was probably worse in 2015. How were you able to kind of get your brand out there and get it moving? So it's a good it's a good question because um, I do believe it's very subjective um, when it comes to restrictions. And there are a couple of companies that you know try to advertise uh, in our space, uh, sexual health and sexual wellness, uh, advertise uh, uh, in New York in the subways and whatnot, and, and they made a you know big buzz around it. And we had the same issues in dating at that time, you know, like we had a psycho poor, poor life, uh, uh, older women dating younger men. And, and at that time, Google said, no, nah, that's not good. Um, we don't like that. And then mm -hmm. we had a sugar daddy site and, and that was totally fine. So older men, younger girls, gone, no problem, you know, and we were like, so who makes up these rules? Like who decides what's good or bad? And obviously that led to a lot of uh, PR and media buzz at that time. Uh -huh. And I feel today it's very similar. So when it comes to pleasure, um, it's a no-no. When it comes to female sexual health, it is always pleasure. When it comes to men, it's a dysfunction, you know, erectile dysfunction, um, PE, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that is always pushed over to the health site. And we probably all have seen a Viagra ad um, over the mm -hmm. past few years. Um, no problem. But when it comes to female uh, sexual health, you don't see a lot of ads out there. So there's your first issue. And you really have to work around these issues. And I always say it's like water. you got to find your way. Um, you can find this absurd and you can be very upset about it. Um, a lot of people are, you know, trying to make buzz out of that. But I think you've got to be more intelligent because you're not going to change the system. You only change the system by changing the way you approach this and that's what we did we go on a lot of pr we obviously try and use uh, ppc you know the classic channels we're totally restricted when it comes to social but mm -hmm. you know the old saying sometimes the shortest um distance between two points is not a straight line and and that's what you have to do here yeah and your your business has gotten to a point where you're you've pretty much exhausted a majority of the avenues on digital so now it's just a matter of optimizing them and and you know making sure that they're all used they're being utilized correctly have you gone into any more traditional side of marketing like you'd mentioned the subways and things like that have you thought about going that route yeah uh, uh, yes and that is obviously the next step um there it depends obviously because we cater to different demographics and um, it depends who you speak to, obviously, and um, you need to understand how their usage of media works and whatnot. So if you build the funnel, you've got to understand when and where do you meet your consumer slash customer. And if you want to build that relationship, it is super important that you find the right tone at the right moment, especially when it comes to our subject, because it's so intimate. And a lot of things, people don't want to talk about it. They won't even admit it to their partner or to themselves sometimes. <laughs> so 
you you really have to um, be very very uh, sensitive to that. But content is key. Content is 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 key and king, you know, yeah. or queen. So I know you have your own private label, and you also yeah. offer a lot of other brands on your own site as well. So you're basically almost like a marketplace for this industry to a certain extent. How do you mm-hmm. decipher when to? Well, A, when did you decipher to create your own private label? What did you see that was mm-hmm. missing? And then B, how do you decipher whether to you know, promote your private label versus promoting some of the other brands that you also offer on your site? Mm. So the, the, our industry has, I would say, almost every criteria or a classic niche market represents. Mm-hmm. Um, there is very low brand recognition. Our industry is almost driven by commodities, you know, like you buy sugar and, and, and salt and pepper at your supermarket. Mm-hmm. So they just buy a sex toy, um, a vibrator. Um, mm-hmm. Brands are not that known. It's changing um, for many different reasons. Um, and when we started Private Label, the reason was that because of low brand awareness, it made so much more sense for us to build our own brand versus to build other people's brand. Because every mm-hmm. time we went out into the market and, and we're selling someone else's brand, we were helping to make a market for them. So it was clear to us that we yeah. say, hey, that dollar is better spent in our brand than in anybody mm-hmm. else's brand. And then classic niche, all the other players will start to go direct to consumer as well. So mm-hmm. they will bypass you sooner than later. You know, yeah. And I think that's what many people and also in other niches find themselves stuck with, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's interesting to see. So why not flip the site and solely focus on your private label and get rid of all the other brands that you were helping? <laughs> I do believe a, a, a choice is important. Um, however, uh, I, 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 the, the, you know, the path I see for our brands is that we're learning so much more and actually um, aggregating so much data, which the next step for us will be to really build products and make recommendations based on the AI that we're developing. So mm-hmm. we're a complete data-driven company, but that needed first to have enough traffic, to have enough data to make these decisions. Mm-hmm. One of the things I've been saying for a long time was very uh, proven to me when I when I had the opportunity to start working with you guys. Because mm-hmm. one of the things I always thought about is, you know, you look at Amazon, massive selection, right? So if you need something, you go to Amazon, they have it, huge selection. Mm-hmm. And my theory was, as time goes on, we're going to start to see marketplaces carved out for certain categories. And when I met you guys and saw what you were doing, I go, this is exactly what I was talking about. It's basically a marketplace for the sex toy industry. So is that kind of how you see Ella Parody like growing into is like, we want to have every single sex toy product. Have you thought about potentially opening it up to a similar Mm -hmm. approach to Amazon where you can let people sell their product on there and they handle the whole process? The answer is yes. Um, As a next step, it... Probably it's not Ella because Ella as a as a property will remain what it is, mm-hmm. but Ella will become part of an ecosystem that I referred to earlier. Um, we're branching out into the private label will become mm-hmm. its own so to say pillar within that ecosystem, and then we will also build a, a house of brands to be able to cater to different um, demographics preferences. And so on and so forth. Uh, not everybody loves the same way, so to say. So yeah. um, different different needs um, and wants. Um, and then the marketplace is, to me, a very logic extension um, that we will be able to offer. And uh, because of the data that we aggregate, um, we will then allow consumers to obviously. Uh, be catered in the best possible manner, right? Um, mm-hmm. I, I think that is, to me, most important is that you have the best possible solution out there. 
And if that means that it is an outside solution, why not? Right. Mm -hmm. That that's, that's that, I think that's also Amazon's um, key success uh, ingredient is really that they are making sure that you as the consumer will get the best possible product choice. Yeah, exactly. I, I completely agree. Like I, Amazon's big thing is, you know, focusing on their customer. Yeah. All they care about is their customer to the point where they've even changed their algorithm consistently for sellers to work with yeah. so that the sellers are also forced to cater to the customer. I mean, I mean, it makes yeah. a ton of sense. You yeah. mentioned that, you know, you started the company because you saw a hole in the market here in the States. Have you done anything to kind of venture back overseas and start to bring Ella into anywhere in Europe or anything like that? So that is an interesting question. Um, <laughs> when I worked in online dating, we were, was our brand, one of the very few brands that worked internationally. Match.com mm -hmm. was never able to branch out into Europe. It's a different brand over there eHarmony, it's a different brand. So there are not many brands in general. Um, uh, Zalando is uh, uh, Zappos, uh, Zappos in the US, Zalando in Europe. Um, mm. There are not many brands that work uh, uh, cross border. There are some, there are some uh, uh, for sure. However, I believe that in our industry and in our market, the needs are really different when it comes to culture and continent. I think even the US as a melting pot has a very diverse, you know, and 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 I wouldn't say difficult, but delicate uh, uh, market to cater to. And it's completely different than Italy or Germany, right? Mm -hmm. So you would have to come up with a different system. Um, and people say like Amazon, of course, but Amazon is one out of a gadillion, right? How many people have tried and failed? So I think, uh, why not become um, the champion over here and then think about the next step? And when I say over here, you know, you can include Canada. You could probably even look at Latin America because the Hispanic uh, uh, portion yeah. of the U.S. and then and then. And I think that's amazing. That is a, mm -hmm. a wonderful market. You also have uh, a lot that you have going on still in Europe, correct? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, obviously, uh, uh, and in and, and Asia. Um, so you know, uh, mm -hmm. but the pandemic put a little bit of a stop on that. So yeah, did the uh, well? That's actually a good point. So I assume, based on the fact that everyone was staying at home with their partners, did you see a really <laughs> nice increase in twenty twenty? Because I did see. That the first time you guys made uh, the ink list of the top 5,000, you were in the top 500. And it was during yeah. 2020. And when I saw that, I was like, yeah, that, I mean, that makes sense. I was stuck at home with my wife. So like, I get it. <laughs> Full disclosure, that was 2019, but the list comes out 2020. So, oh, we yeah, that's a good, that. oh, that's a good yeah, point. Yeah. But we, we made the list again in, in 2020. Um, but, um, uh, it, uh, yes, uh, what we saw was a huge spike. And then in 2021, I think people needed to start to collect their thoughts. And uh, well, there was a lot going on, you know, yeah. at first they got mm -hmm. bored and then they they were all like afraid. And, you know, I think this year will be the year where we start to uh, structure our new way of life. Um, and mm -hmm. I think there will be a new way of life in, in many different areas. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's a good point. I forgot that those come out later. Um, so, uh, so what is it like? You know, you, you're you've gotten the business so far. You guys have been around uh, 2015 when you started. You said correct. On paper, uh, then it took us about a year to put together the platform because um, mm -hmm. we reached out to suppliers. This is how broken and outdated the industry was, and. and partly still is, people were like, yeah, no problem. Send me a fax, you know, once a week. And then I send out the products. And we were like, no, no, no. We're talking about hundreds of products a day. You know, and at that time we were, you know, today we're doing thousands, but whatever. Yeah. And, and I said, I cannot send you a fax every day with hundreds of orders. Um, so it took us a, a long time to find a supplier that was willing to work on an API with us. I mean, this, mm -hmm. this is how crazy it was. And then we were still shipping by hand the first packages and 
and putting them <laughs> together, you know, on the floor and stuff like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, fast forward today, we, we have, uh, uh, different fulfillment centers. We have our own, uh, third party logistics operations in, in Las mm-hmm. Vegas and, 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 and. So you basically, you, I mean, we could argue that you are like the grandfather of modernizing the entire sex toy industry, at least here in the States <laughs> and getting them to catch up on like, Hey, sell your stuff online. <laughs> Ella, I would Ella, I would say it's Ella, and, and then it would be more grandmother. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I think at least we've we've uh, given the industry a, a solid push in that direction. Mm-hmm. And yeah. a lot of people were super skeptical, right? Because they were like Amazon was the devil, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. destroying existing um, supply chains and distribution channels, and, and destroying you know, small shops and whatnot. It's almost like mm-hmm. bookstores in the nineties was Amazon, you know? Yeah. So with the fact that, you know, you, you, you started from scratch, got up, got the business to where it is now, which is incredibly impressive. And most e-commerce sellers dream of what is it that kind of motivates you to keep going and keep pushing and keep innovating on Ella? <laughs> Well, I think uh, uh, our customers, um, I think uh, to, to, to read, because some people write and some people even call and, and share their stories. And I think um, when, when I started this, I had a vision and I said, uh, I said um, at that time, I said, we want to become the Martha Stewart of, of this industry. We want to give people guidance, uh, what Martha Stewart did to the kitchen and the living room and the garden. And um, I said, mm-hmm. we want to do to the bathroom and the bathroom, right? Um, and, and inspire people to change their life. And I think um, what people also because of COVID obviously started to realize is that there is a mental health component. Um, there is a, there's more, there's a personal care component when you look at holistically a happy and healthy life. So I think there is a lot more to do um, in this country, just to mention a few stats, you know, you have 100 million people pre-diabetic and diabetic. It means that these people could suffer from, from you know, issues that I feel we can help with to a certain degree, at least. Um, mm-hmm. There, You know, many men suffer from ED, um, mm-hmm. you know, but they may have a, a blood pressure problem. And I think, you know, educate everyone and help them to live a better happier and healthier life is enlightening and empowering. And I think that's what keeps me up and, and excites me. And, you know, there's still a long way. I don't think that I will be able to get to the finish line per se, um, because Mm -hmm. it's, it's a long way to go, but it's, it's amazing and inspiring. And, you know, you're, you're making good money and, 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 and making people happy. I mean, that's, that, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So with that, motivation you take going forward i know you know the business has gotten a lot bigger the team's gotten a lot larger what is your day-to-day like like how do you channel that energy what are you mainly focused on right now so recently we took on a new ceo um which allows me to step back and i became executive chairman um and i focus on on product um and that really is what i'm doing now is to focus what i mentioned earlier is to where do we go next and how do we really build out the vision? Um, and our new CEO is, is a very data savvy, tech savvy individual who I think is amazing because he will be able to drive this, this transition much better than, than I do. I always say, you know, the entrepreneur has to do the right things and, and the manager has to do the things right. You know, so kind of that. If yeah. you follow along. <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. And you're also writing a book right now, correct? <laughs> I, I I am. Yes, I'm in the in the last uh, uh, in the last phase, so to say. So, what is your book going to be about? It is about uh, my last, uh, oh, it's about my life to a certain degree, but it's about the last 20 years, uh, mainly because I talk about communication and I literally, there is a song called uh, Escape by Rupert Holmes. 
and then uh, it's called the Pina Colada song. And uh, that's when, if you like Pina Colada, I'm not going to sing here. <laughs> it's just no, 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 loud. you have time. But, Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> here are the lyrics. But everybody who knows the song, they everybody sings the song. And I'm asking, do you know the lyrics, right? It's about this guy. He's in bed, reads the paper. It's 1978 or 79, and he's bored of his, you know, it's like a one-up recording of your favorite song. So he reads mm-hmm. the classified ads. There's this ad, and it says, hey, if you're, like, also bored, blah, blah, blah. He answers to the ad. He sets up a meeting at the bar at O'Malley's, and guess who comes in? You know, he's like, I knew the smile in an instant, the curve of a face. It was my own lovely lady. Um, you know, and and I'm like, hmm. Interesting. Fast forward 2022, we literally have a gazillion ways to communicate, um, but we still are facing the same problem. We don't communicate. So it's mm-hmm. not about communication per se. It's really about the quality of communication. And I talk about relationships and, you know, what I experience when I talk to, you know, divorce lawyers, therapists, um, data, obviously, uh, even prostitutes and whatnot, you know, and I say, why do we cheat? And why do we part ways when we used to be in love? And where do where did we drop the ball? It's not like you go to bed on Friday and work up Monday morning and you say, Oh, divorce, you know, that <laughs> that is a yeah. process. And, and that's what I try and explain in this book and try and give some ideas for how to circumvent and avoid that which is really why i built this company right so Mm -hmm. there's a logic extension to it and um but communication relationships is not only in partnerships you know in in intimate partnerships it's also in in job like right now you and i you know we do communicate but is it good communication do i understand what you're asking me do i answer the question you're asking me yada yada yo Mm -hmm. right and that's really where a lot of people for some reason, um, drop the ball, and and uh, then in any relationship, it, it it deteriorates and derails. Yeah. So, what is your your stance on today's dating apps? I mean, you've been in in dating apps since day one. Yeah. And now, yeah. now it's just now it's just a picture and a swipe. So, what's what's your your stance on that? Because that sounds like horrible communication to me. <laughs> Well, it's very superficial, right? And um, I, I believe uh, well, when I started in online dating, what I saw the the is I said this is like television. And when I grew up, we only had like three stations, you know. And today we have like a gazillion stations, including streaming and whatnot, you know. So this is the same. It took the same path, and um, it started with any possible. Uh, uh, the niche, you know, uniform dating, uh, Jewish dating. I mean, there's everything now. Mm-hmm. And um, I think uh, it overcomplicates uh, things a lot, you know. And uh, at the end of the day, it depends what you're looking for. Uh, obviously, if you're kinky and whatnot, and you're looking for a niche, then you will find it. So that's good. Mm-hmm. But if you're more on the broader side of things, um, it's also getting a lot more complicated. You know, you might be better off just go to the bar. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Going back to basics. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's very interesting. I've been in a relationship since I was in high school, so like I never got to do the dating app thing. But it is very impressive when my friends are standing next to people at a bar and they're just staring at their phone and and just swiping. Yeah, and I'm like, this yeah. is like, just go talk to her. She's right there. And they're yep. like, no, let's, let's yep. see who else is around here. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah and, and that's what you you're missing out you're literally missing out on opportunity mm-hmm. right in front of you yeah i agree it's the forest of because of the trees or something yeah <laughs> you know thank you so much i don't want to take up any more time i know you're super busy i really appreciate ha- <laughs> having you on the show um why don't you take a second let everyone know where they can find out more about you l Perdi, and if you have uh any insight into where your book will be available <laughs> <laughs> I will let you know when my book is available so you can share that. I don't Put even the have show notes. a title yet. I don't even have a title yet. So, um, but yeah, uh, obviously on, on our website, um, Ella uh, Parody, E L L A, and then Parody is like paradise, no E at the end dot com. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, you go there and uh, 
everything else, uh, you get the newsletters and, and whatnot. You'll be in the loop. Perfect. You know, super appreciative. Thank you so much for being on the show. It was great. Obviously, everyone who tuned in, thank you as well. Please make sure you rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff on whichever podcast platform you want to or YouTube or ecomshow.com or wherever. I don't care. Google it. Uh, But thanks again. Appreciate it. We'll see you all next time. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in to the Ecom Show. Head over to ecomshow.com to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or on the Blue Tusker YouTube channel. The Ecom Show is brought to you by Blue Tusker, a full-service digital marketing company specifically for e-commerce sellers looking to accelerate their growth. Go to bluetusker.com now for more information. Make sure to tune in next week for another amazing episode of The Ecom Show.